So as a doctor, I mean, you're cutting into patients all the time and I, I commend you for that because I'm mortified of blood. So if I, if I just look at blood, I, I lose my focus and I'm fainting all over the place. So that, I mean, it's, it's wonderful that you have come back to Pakistan and you are helping your fellow Pakistanis with this wonderful um, skill that you've developed over the past years and it's very wonderful. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, why it's important for people to get regular checkups when it comes to liver. Yeah, liver is a very important organ. Probably it's the largest organ of your body. Uh, and it is the factory, a metabolic factory of your body. And it has thousands of functions. Uh, if one of these functions get disturbed, it is going to disturb you as a whole. So it is very important that you have a healthy liver. And liver diseases are so common. Actually, it's rampant in our country, especially the viral hepatitis, like hepatitis A and E, which spread through water, contaminated water, or contaminated food. And hepatitis B and C, which spread through blood-contaminated products. So they are so common in our country that almost each one of us is at risk of developing these kind of liver diseases. All the time? All the time. So we go to restaurants or we go to a shop, we're at risk, yes, even we, in our own homes? Uh, not in your own home, but you are at a risk. And the other thing which is coming into Pakistan now, because we are getting westernized in the recent times, our food is changing now, and fatty liver is something which is coming up, and it's on the rise actually. So waterborne infections, blood-borne infections and fatty liver and again with westernization and modernization alcohol is coming into our society as well although it is not publicly acceptable but a lot of people who drink alcohol and drink it to a harmful level, level. A harmful level of drinking so i think these are the things which are very common so one has to be careful and need to look into that he has a healthy liver all right actually that relates to my next question which activities are which damage our liver. Yeah, Today, it's a junk food. Majority of the young children and adults, they actually eat junk food, lack of exercise. These are the two things which make your body's metabolism to disturb to some extent and that makes your liver getting fatty. And fatty liver is the first step to the liver damage. So you need to have a balanced diet, do regular exercise, keep a check on your weight, and if you're doing all that, your liver should be healthy all the time. All right, so my next question is that, uh, what kind of liver problems are there within the Pakistani society? I mean, the commonest problem uh, we face is actually the hepatitis. That is, hepatitis means inflammation of the liver. Yaudu means soza shoti a liver heat. It can be due to viruses like hepatitis A, B, C, D, E or it can be due to drugs, harmful drinking, and a lot of other things. I think medicine is also a cause when you take, for example, uh, brufane or some other, like dysprene or Tylenol or something in excess, and uh, you know, unless it's not doctor's prescription, then your liver is also damaged, and it also does uh, problems to your heart. So everything in the human anatomy is just connected to one thing and yeah. another. So, all right, that, that's, that's very interesting. But um, let's talk about how, what kind of nishan that we see in terms of physical appearance uh, that we know that our liver has been damaged or has there been a problem in it? Because liver is a very big organ and it is composed of millions and trillions of cells. And God has given you plenty of liver. Yeah. Even if your liver is damaged up to 70 to 80 percent, actually you may not have any symptoms. And in the early stages of any liver illness, you know, if there is some damage going on, you, you may not have any symptoms. And by and large, the symptoms, the real symptoms which will guide you that somebody has a liver problem actually comes at a very late stage. So in the early phase, actually you may not have any symptoms. But especially these hepatitis viruses, in the early stage you can get a bit of a tiredness, 
aches and pains, unexplained low-grade fever, loss of appetite, some loss of weight. So these are the non-specific symptoms. What kind of pain? Um, just in that specific region or in the whole body? It can be specific in the liver if there is some infection or inflammation going on in the liver. You can get some pain in the upper quadrant of your belly. Uh, in right. the beginning or it can be generalized aches and pains if it due to some viruses <clears throat> all right acha so uh, ladies and gentlemen i would love to welcome you all to sundown and aaj ke mehman bahut khaas hai he is none other than dr faisal dar who is the pioneer of liver transplantation in pakistan it is a huge privilege for me to be sitting with you and to be learning from you Again, I'm not a medical uh, professional or I don't have a medical background. So again, everything you're telling me is very important, hai, very relevant in our society. Se. Or, um, he uh, currently works at Qaeda Azam International Hospital or he is the leading liver transplant surgeon in Pakistan. Amazing. Just Thank absolutely you. phenomenal. And uh, Alhamdulillah, say, um, you've completed around 101 living donor transplant surgeries. It's actually 900. 900. All right. 900 living um, donor transplant surgeries in Pakistan. And um, you have a specialized team of uh, one of the best. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly. I, I, it's not my intention. Hematology, right? It's hepato pancreatico biliary. Hepatic means liver. Yeah. It's a Greek word. All right. Pancreas means pancreas. And biliary means bile ducts. So that's the system. All right. Your liver is connected to your intestine through the bile duct and the pancreas. All right. Okay. I, again, that's just again. Again, we're talking about the human anatomy, so yeah. everything is just linked to each other. Yeah. And um, you've had, I think, more than ten thousand patients within the last nine years. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's pretty amazing. And again, it's it's a wonderful honor. Um, let's talk a little bit about hepatitis. Uh, you talked about that A, B, C, D. Hai. Or Hamara Subagi, which is also good for our um, I think immune system as well because it's super spicy, Malagatani soup. Hai. Okay. So it's very good. But yes, hepatitis can bare me bat kare, so hepatitis A, B, C, D, E. What are the differences and what are the matab, symptoms maybe if you want to indulge in that? Okay, hepatitis A and E. They are very common in our society and they spread through contaminated water or food and they lead to some kind of a liver damage and by and large the liver damage is not severe it's kind of a self-limiting the patient will get some aches and pains a bit of a fever and in the second week they get some jaundice and in two three weeks time the thing starts settling down and in about four to six weeks time it should be back to normal because whatever the liver is damaged by these viruses, liver has the amazing capacity to regenerate and repair this damage. So in, I would say, 98% of the times with hepatitis A and E, your liver damage will correct regenerate. itself. Yeah. And there will be no signs as if you have any liver damage in the due course of time. So these are hepatitis A and E. So they lead to short illness for a short period of time and majority of the cases, liver recovers back to absolute normality. In 2% of the cases, the liver damage is so severe that the liver fails completely. And in those 2%, you actually need a liver transplant to save the life. Uh, we don't have the exact statistics that how many people get hepatitis A and E in our country. The other form of hepatitis is hepatitis B, C and D. They are a kind of a viruses which lead to a low-grade chronic damage to the liver. You might have acquired these infections at some point uh, and these spread through the blood contaminated products. I, either if you have transfused with blood mm. or you got a contaminated needle or you got some treatment from a dentist which uses contaminated instruments and these sort of things. So these are blood-borne infections. So once you got the infection, it remains silent for a good few years, keep on giving your liver a bit of a slow damage, mm. which may not be recognized at that stage. Thank you. But over 10 to 15 years, 
your liver is slowly getting damaged and replaced by a scar tissue. And eventually, after 15, 20 years, the liver actually shrinks down, which is called liver cirrhosis. And that stage is not reversible. And that means the liver has been damaged permanently. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm a little too excited about yeah. the soup right now. Please, you can play a Malikatani soup lay at um, Tangelo's. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's me, uh, basically lemon or black pepper and um, garlic. Dalta hai. The, the ingredients that I personally And it doesn't damage the liver? Yeah, it doesn't damage okay. the liver. So it's really good. And um, they, uh, there's so many things that are naturally present here. Matab, garlic has, you know, anti-inflammatory uh, properties. And yeah. um, pepper, just, if you take it with the soup, then your coughing, irritable yeah. cough, it will suppress. So many different things that are naturally present here. When you take them, they relieve so many of your uh, symptoms and uh, problems. So please, you play. And our fish we are here. This is fried fish at Tangelo's with um, tartar sauce, French fries, and sautéed vegetables. I think we should eat it first. And or fish is very good for liver. Fish is very good. Yes, mm. I think it has omega three. Yeah. Three in it. So please, you play. Thank you. So, what kind of fish do you prefer? I mean, as a doctor, in you know. I mean, <laughs> I, I myself actually is not a big fan of fish. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> but this fish is really good. But this good. fried fish is really yeah. good. Yeah, I have tried it. It's really good. All right. Would you like some vegetables? Because I know doctors no, I'm okay. Thank are. You. <laughs> and uh, some sauce. I'm okay. Acha. Cheek. So. Um, अच्छा मैं मैं जानना चाहती हूँ थोड़ा कि जब आप बड़े हो रहे थे when you had just completed your I think metric या FSC तो आप आप कौन से mind frame में थे कि अच्छा अब मैंने doctor बनना है like I want to know actually when I did my metric I wanted to be an engineer really वो क्यों I don't know at that time this was my thought that I would be an engineer हाँ जी but my metric numbers was actually not that much hmm. that I could get uh, admission in pre-engineering. So, Please, uh, I, so I went to my local college Jee. and in those days I think there were more trend of the people who were going to engineering side. So Jee. I they have limited seats so they did not offer me admission in pre-engineering. So the, on the medical side there, there were slots. Hmm. So I just got admission in pre-medical because the college was closer to my home. Otherwise, I have gone to far away. So that is so. I think so. It was the destiny. Um, and uh, I wanted to be an engineer, but been. I got admission into pre-medicine, and then I qualified for a medical yeah. college because I got very good hmm. marks in FSC, and that is how I became a doctor. Okay, so uh, were your parents happy? Uh, that you decided to become a doctor. Usually, the parents ko hota hai na ke doctor is at the top. Phir engineering, yeah. phir law, law yeah. phir social sciences. Well, actually, they were okay. That whatever I want to do. Hmm. Actually, my elder brother wanted me to go into the army because he went Pakistan army. Oh. And he pushed me hard to go into Pakistan army. But at that time, I was not interested, interested. in army. I said I just want to pursue a career either in hmm. engineering or something like that. अच्छा तो इंजीनियरिंग क्यों मतलब आपके कोई फैमिली मेंबर थे इंजीनियर या वो आई डोंट नो बट आई थिंक एट दैट टाइम आई वाज 16 इयर्स ओल्ड सो आई डिड नॉट हैव दैट मैच्योरिटी सो इट वाज जस्ट अ थॉट दैट आई वांट टू बी इंजीनियर नहीं यूजुअली वो होता है कि अच्छा मैंने यू नो आई वांट टू वर्क � Airplanes, or I want to work with cars. So, then usually, the parents say, "Okay, engineering, can do. But me, can do." No, I think I didn't. I didn't belong to that hmm. village. Childhood, hmm. I lived in a village, so hmm. I didn't have much options. So, I just wanted to study, oh. and engineering was that thought at the time. Acha, so you can share your background with us. We will share it with you. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I belong to Karia, which is a part of District Gujarat. So I did my FSC from there and qualified for the medical college. Uh, I went to Alama Iqbal Medical College in Lahore. Uh, did my MBBS Ooh, from there. Oh, it's so spicy. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's so spicy. Hmm. Uh, and after completing my medical education, I did my house job and then the surgical training here in Islamabad at Pakistan Institute of Medical Sciences. Hmm. And I did my fellowship in general surgery. And after completing that, I was a general surgeon 
but I wanted to learn more and do some further specialization. Uh, so I decided to go to UK. I passed the fellowship examination of Royal College of Surgeons and went there. So for the first two years, I was doing my jobs in general surgery as a registrar. But then I realized that whatever I'm doing at the moment, I have already learned it in Pakistan. So I need to uh, learn something different. So because eventually I wanted to come back to Pakistan, but I wanted with some sort of a skill which is either not present or it is not that common. I mean, you were just this initially. From day one, आपके दिमाग में यही था कि मैंने वापस जाना है और अपने लोगों की मदद करनी है। Yeah, I was very clear because uh, I always wanted to come back, uh, and obviously, if you have to come back, you have to come back with some sort of a skill set where one you can survive at your own, and secondly, you can contribute as well to the society. Uh, to the society. Okay. So liver surgery was non-existent. So somehow I got this idea, and then I was lucky. that I got into one of the best hospitals in the world and got trained there. That's mm. wonderful. All right, so um, now let's talk about liver transplant, uh, the process itself. Yeah. So let's discuss the problems that are attached with liver transplantation in kids. Jo bachche hain, jo liver transplant surgery karwate hain. Unke kya problems aapko, matab, what do they face? And as a doctor, how do you cope with them? देखिए बच्चों के एग्जैक्ट फिगर्स तो हमारे पास नहीं है कि पाकिस्तान में कितने बच्चों को ट्रांसप्लांट की ज़रूरत है वी डोंट हैव द लोकल डेटा बट सिंस वी आर बेस्ड एज अ फैमिली कंट्री वेर देर आर लॉट ऑफ क्रॉस मैरिज इन द फैमिली सो लॉट ऑफ लिवर डिजीज इज रन इन द फैमिलीज एज वेल सो आई गेस देर इज अज नंबर ऑफ चिल्ड्रन विद लिवर डिजीज एंड मेजोरिटी ऑफ दीज लिवर डिजीज आर एक्चुअली related to the cross marriages in the family all right uh, and they run in the families as well and these then these hepatitis a and e which we have talked about uh, they are also very common in children as well so the children who has a liver damage which eventually leads to liver failure okay. they they needs liver transplant uh, the exact number of children i don't know but it is always very emotionally touching when a small child comes to you with liver failure and the family is all around them uh, so they definitely need liver transplant if they have a liver failure all right and what about adults i mean adults normally uh, they have this liver disease going on from good few years uh, they are diagnosed with either one of the hepatitis they have symptom of the liver disease and they are going to different doctors so there there is a long track record uh, of the liver illness which they have and now is the time has come when either they have a liver failure or they have developed a liver cancer so that is the time when you need a liver transplant all right my next question is regarding death as a doctor how do you deal with death i mean it, it is a very very difficult situation Actually, uh, I face these circumstances uh, in the post-transplant setting or the other major liver or pancreatic operations I do because this is a very complex area. The operations are difficult; they are long hours. Patients are pretty sick, and since I work in a private environment, and this kind of a facility is not available in the every corner of the country, there are only few people who can offer. these services in the country so people come to me from all over pakistan and it costs a lot of money to them as well so if somebody comes from a very far flung area they have uh, gathered money by different sources and then they go through a big operation and then eventually uh, if due to any complication that happens it, it is a very very difficult situation to actually handle uh, but the way i do my practice is uh, i think i communicate with the families right from day one uh, i would explain them counsel them in detail that what kind of operation it's going to be what are the risks what are the benefits you know to all of my patients are actually well explained about the process about the operation its risks and benefits 
so they are already prepared but what i have realized is before the operation when you are explaining all these things uh, to the patients and the families i don't know how much they register actually like for example if i tell somebody that you have a 10% risk of death after this operation so i tell everyone all patients based on their condition i quote them a risk of death and risk of complication but i i'm not never sure how much of it they are registering in their head because once you do the operation and then the complications happen although majority of the people have fairly an idea what is going to happen but still breaking the bad news of a death is difficult under the circumstances that they are coming far away they have been given the hope that after this operation everything is going to be normalized but at the cost of an increased risk of death and complication yes. it it is a difficult situation and actually that's the biggest stress i take as a liver and a transplant surgeon in my day to day practice oh goodness all right so uh, let's go back a couple of years um uh, when you first lost your patient aapka jo pehla patient tha jo matlab you had no control over how did you handle that situation do do you recall them do you think about them I mean, uh, was I it significant for you, basically? I think every death is significant, to be very honest, because you are so much attached to your patient, and it's not like the patient comes to you one day and the next day you do the operation, and two days later he or she dies, and then you forget about them. I think it, it's a big association because they comes to you, you explain them things, they go back, they think over it, and they come back. they get second and third opinion so i have seen them few times so you are actually emotionally attached to them and then you a lot of patient you you know their family circumstances because a lot of family members will come the way they have arranged the resources so i think it's more of a and i to be very honest i i treat every patient as if it's my own family member and i think that is what is different uh, and that is why the patients are very much attached to me and the same emotions actually uh, i feel once i lose a patient so i remember all of my patients uh, who died after the surgery and i pray for them i mean when i go into my surgery i pray for them that everything should go well and if i lose someone again i keep on praying for them all right please aap apne apni fish ko bhi haath nahi lagaya there is soup and Thank crackers malagatani soup and crackers um so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your growing up bachpan aapka kaisa guzra matlab main bas padhai mein the aap matlab completely subah se lekar raat tak no no i used to live in my village um subah se dopahar tak school sham ko afternoon mein main gaon ke colleague se saath cricket khelna or i think we used to close the day after maghrib prayer we used to get up early in the morning at the time of fajr prayer or maghrib ke time pe hamara day close ho jata tha so it was just a very simple uh, childhood uh, with the friends from the village uh, and i i remember all that abhi bhi aap aapke jo purane friends the jo gaon mein the unke sath aapka rabta hai yes i do i have few friends um sadly in my village uh, the literacy rate was very very low and actually i was the first one from my village who became a doctor most of my childhood friends they could not go beyond matric you know so some of them are laborers some of them have a rickshaw but still they are friends and whenever i go back I mm, sit down with them. Remember old times. Chai pite hain, gab shab lagate hain. Ye to bahut achhi baat hai. Um, and uh, what about your kids? Uh, I have three kids, two sons and a daughter. Oh, that's uh, wonderful. So they are very happy, go lucky type of children. They are enjoying their life, and I am trying to call and counsel them that they need to work hard if they want to be successful in life. Because so they are uh, listening to me. but they're not working that hard yet <laughs> <laughs> it's all right abhi i think unke bas time hoga thoda sa to aapne kisi ko motivate nahi ki aapne teen bachon mein se ki acha doctor ke side you know doctor ban jao that this is a very good field of it's a very giving field 
I mean, um, I do have discussions with them and I still believe that medicine is a very solid profession across the world and doctors actually do well all over the world. Uh, but actually, I have just guided them to do hard work in life because I think if you do the hard work, you can achieve whatever you want to do. Hard work life. and smart work. I think um, both, uh, both play ha hand in hand. I am a believer of a hard, hard work. work. I was not that smart, but I <laughs> thought I achieved something because of the hard work. I think consistency is the most important thing. I have seen a lot of very intelligent, very smart people. If they are not working hard, they are not going to go far in life. For me, hard work is the key. If you are persistent, doing things with commitment. So that is what I counsel them, that you need to work hard. But they they are privileged children, their I'm background... So Would you like some tea? No, I'm okay. Thank you. Achha. No, thank you. Uh, I'm okay. Thank you. G -chai. Achha. So um, you are currently uh, affiliated or attached to PKLI. Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit more about this? Uh, this is Pakistan Kidney and Liver Institute. Uh, I think the idea was conceived maybe four or five years ago. Uh, me and Dr. Saeed Akhtar, who is a kidney transplant surgeon, and he do a lot of philanthropic work as well. So he wanted to make a hospital where we can he can offer um, uh, free treatment to patients with kidney diseases and he had a background to it as well uh, and because we both used to work in Shifa International Hospital at that time and we used to help each other in different patients so that is how we were good colleagues uh, and Dr. Saeed was already doing this philanthropic work from last 10 years so he wanted to make a kidney hospital and for that he was meeting different people uh, so at one point in time, he met Mr. Shiva Sharif, who was the Chief Minister of Punjab at that time, and he shared his idea with him. And he got convinced, and he said, I would like to uh, make arrangement for you. I can give you land, and I can make the whole hospital for you. But one, you have to do it in Lahore, and secondly, you have to include liver transplantation into it as well. All right. Uh, so then Dr. Saeed Asir came back to me that he wanted liver and Lahore. So are you with me? So I said, yes, it is a great thing. We are going to get a big opportunity if we want to. It's for a great pay. cause. Yeah, it's a great cause. And as an individual, both of us wanted to make a great academic center, which will be a great academic center. And secondly, it should offer free treatment as well to mm -hmm. one who can afford. All right. So, um, we talked about that we need to make liver transplantation surgeries more affordable. Yeah. So, on your part, what are you doing exactly? I mean, is there a charity which is in your name? Or is there a foundation which, um, for example, any person can come and donate to your charity or organization? So, someone who is in need of surgery, they can get surgery and they are able to get what they need to get? I mean, I, I myself don't have any registered charity at the moment. Yes. Um, but I think what you need to understand is um, uh, good quality health care uh, has a price. Someone has to pay for it. Either it's a government, it's a patient <coughs> himself, the family or an NGO. And in Pakistan, actually the health service is already very much subsidized. So no matter whether it's a simple medical care or a very complex surgical operation, there is a cost attached to it. That cost has to be paid by someone. Ideally, it's the responsibility of the state to provide free health care to its citizen. But unfortunately, in our country, uh, state does not have that ownership. So people are at their own. Uh, joining PKLI was a part of that commitment that that is where I can actually offer my bit of providing free service to the uh, people, people of Pakistan. I mean, I as a personal level, I can offer a free transplant to someone, but I cannot do that transplant uh, anywhere. It, it has to have a certain decent level facility where that transplant can be done. And there is a recurrent cost to that transplant program as well. That has to be bared by government or by NGOs or the patient themselves. 
so eventually i personally want uh, something like that a um, great academic center which provide the highest best possible care to patients but there has to be a cushion for patients who cannot afford so i think it it should be a cross subsidy model where people who can pay they should pay at a subsidized rate and people who can contribute a little bit they should contribute that and the people who are extremely deserving and cannot pay at all they they should not be refused treatment they the institution need to have that cushion that whoever comes to their door step for a treatment they should offer the treatment uh, that is my ultimate dream <clears throat> to <clears throat> either create or be a part or associated with such an institution where i can play my role and i think i will keep on struggling for that and striving for that inshallah acha my as a doctor and um, <clears throat> i want to know do you have any aspirations of creating your own institution or hospital i mean yes i do and not at a at a personal level and not if that i want to uh, die by leaving my legacy behind but i think i have been so privileged i come from a very humble background god has been very kind and i have a pioneered liver transplantation in pakistan so at, at at my personal level i think i have already achieved a lot now the next level of achievement be how you contribute all that back to the society and me being a professional and a transplant surgeon i mean i have a dream that there should be a great medical center in this country which should it's not about liver only all Overall the areas health. It, we need a very highly specialized hospital in our country which should be a great academic institution that it not only offer the best health care but it also provide a training environment for your doctors nurses and paramedic uh, and a medical education so it should provide a great academic facility and at the same time it should provide free care to those who cannot afford and i am working on it and will keep on working i think the bigger dreams come with time so you start a thousand mile journey with the one step so i have already taken that first few steps uh, whether i will be able to achieve all that i don't know but my goal is to just keep working for it inshallah inshallah um, our prayers are with you Thank and you. Uh, we are, we cannot wait to see more of your greatness spreading through the society i mean you're already doing wonders for the society so it's 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 a huge honor so apart from saving lives no. do you have any other hobbies oh <laughs> <laughs> actually i am so much into work i don't have any hobbies anymore uh, but whenever i get free time i spend with my family and go out with my kids and friends so um matlab koi sports bachon ke sath agar aap khelte ho cricket football yeah, yeah i do mere bachche jo hain wo basketball bahut achhi khelte hain my hmm. son is a captain of his uh, college team Achha. in basketball so yes i do play with him whenever he comes home we go out for swimming we go out for hiking and <coughs> that is what actually i do <coughs> i do regular exercise in the morning for Achha. about uh, 45 50 minutes because you have to keep yourself fit for these long operations to aapka jo longest surgery thi how long was that matlab how long is a normal surgery and what was the longest you know yeah, that you had done on an average takes about 7 to 8 hours that that's the average time of uh, operation and the longest i did was for about 24 hours because and that was my 100th transplant in pakistan i'm sorry could you just repeat that number 24 hours 24 hours yeah, because okay. it, it was a difficult transplant and wow. it just went on on and on and on and even uh, last night uh, i did a transplant which is called as double donor transplant because the patient was 130 kilos so one of the donor's liver because from donor you can only take one side you cannot take the whole liver yeah. so one of his donor's liver was not sufficient for him so we have to use two donors one gave the right side the other gave the left side so actually it was two transplants in one patient so it went for about 10 11 hours and it was really tough 
My goodness, that, the, oh my God, just, okay, that is intense, that is very intense. <laughs> yeah, it is very I, intense. I tip my hat to you in awe. Anyway, um, I had so much fun learning from you and um, feel free to follow Dr. Fessel on his website at www.fesseldar.com. Uh, it was a privilege. Thank you so much. And if you need any help in terms of understanding what liver transplant is or the problems that a person faces during surgeries, you can f watch the whole episode. We've covered all of this. Yes. And um, uh, that's about it. Thank you so much. And thank you, guys. <laughs>